there wasn't another one there and I would have lost interest. And one day I'm walking by those tapes and that voice says open one up and I start to walk over and open one up and another voice says there's nothing in there for you and I start to walk away and another voice says open it up and I have to walk back and another voice says there's nothing in there. And I'm telling you it was a struggle to get one of those tapes open and you ask yourself, where does that come from, this struggle? I've opened tapes up my entire life for music. It didn't matter. If it's music, I just open them up, put them in a the thing. But this is, there's a struggle. Where does that come from? And I read it in the Bible about demonic realms and angelic realms and there's stuff going on around here that we don't know about. And I went back to this moment in my life as, as a struggle, as a struggle to get to God's Word because that, at one point my brain just screamed at me, it's just biblical trash. Just biblical trash. Nothing for you. And I don't know why, but I just ripped one open and I threw them on the floor. I was, it was almost like they were hot. I just threw them on the floor. Two of them in there and I went great. And it was Ecclesiastes. I'm glad you laughed. Years later, I shared this story for the first time and some people came up to me after, afterwards and they said, I can't believe God used Ecclesiastes to lead you to Christ. And I go, why? They go, well, it was such a cynical book. I go, well, you didn't know me like he knew me. <laughs> I have to tell you, from the first time I put that tape in that, in that, in that little tape player and, 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 and put it on, and I got to tell you, folks, we lost all our front room furniture in, in the bankruptcy. We had nothing in there but a boom box in our living room and a bookshelf, and that was it. Because God knew if I had a couch, I would have fell asleep before halfway through the tape. So I'm sitting on the floor, and I put this thing in, and, and, and I couldn't even pronounce it. Cleasy, clazy, clazy. So I got to get the Bible out of the junk drawer, which it hadn't left in a year and a half. It was still there. And I open it up to this Ecclesiastes, and from the moment I heard meaningless, which is the beginning of the NIV, meaningless, meaningless, and then the other one is vanity. It's all vanity. Everything on this earth. I mean, my brain went, wow, what is that? Meaningless. That's in the Bible, meaningless. And there it was, right in the first, I think, meaningless. And what I got out of that first 45-minute sermon from that pastor was this. This is it in a nutshell. Life without God has no meaning. Without meaning in your life, there's no purpose. And if you don't have purpose for your life, suicide will ultimately be your answer. Wow! I'm not kidding you. That's in the Bible? And at one point, I wanted to run on the lawn, and I wanted to run out in my front lawn and go, Has anybody read this thing? Wow! What a book! What a book! Like I was the first guy to ever read the darn thing. And when he talked about his Jesus, not the one that I thought made people pious and holier than thou and self-righteous. No, he talked about a lamb who went to slaughter. He talked about a lamb who got slaughtered, an innocent. And when I heard the story of Jesus, I mean, I really heard the story of Jesus. And when God convicts your heart of your sin, and you know what kind of man you are, and you get downwind from the kind of father you are and the kind of husband you are, and you hear about the love of gra and the grace of Jesus and nailed to that cross. And they put him up there. And they put the crown of thorns on him and they spit at him. And I'd been in clubs, folks, where they threw beer bottles at me. I've been in clubs where people humiliated me. And I didn't want to forgive them. I wanted to rip their hearts out. I wanted to rip their throats out. I know how I'd react. And when he says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I came to save the world, not condemn the world. And there's no, no list of sins that are unforgivable. There's no caveat. He didn't sit on that cross and say, everybody but Jeff. Not everybody but Jeff. Everybody. No matter what you've done. When he talked to the prostitute at the well. The religious people I thought I knew wouldn't have anything to do with the prostitute. This Jesus not only sat there and talked to her and told her about her life, but he said, I offer you a water, a living water. Once you drink, you'll never thirst again. That's a spiritual water. I, like the prostitute, said, how do I get that? And my buddy Phil, who kept in touch with me, who gave me those tapes, I was at, in Dallas, Texas one day, and he said, uh, I, I, when I met you, I knew you were looking for something. Have you found it? And I said, all I can think to say is if Jesus Christ is not who he said he was, then I'm a dead man. Solomon was right. If this Jesus, this one that I, I heard about, will, will, will give me purpose, then I want this Jesus. And he said, can you admit you're a sinner? And I went, well, let me think about that one first. <laughs> At that point in my life, folks, it was easy. Paul says the law came. The law was there. 
to convict us of our sin. And when I look at those Ten Commandments, I violated every one of them. When I stood on that chair and I looked down at my wife and I called her stupid, I committed murder. When I lust and I look at things that I shouldn't look at, Jesus took it out of the realm of an act. He put it into the human heart. What a gift. Billy Graham said that the day after he committed his life to Christ, all of a sudden the trees were a little greener, the flowers smelled a little better. That's it. The world just looks a little different to me today. I have problems. Tammy went through breast cancer. She's okay. I keep forgetting to mention that. I get emails. Is your wife all right? You mentioned she had cancer. You know, it's like, But that grace, that gift, and that purpose, and that point to life is, this is it. I was created in the image of a God who loved me enough to create me to look like Him. He don't make no trash, folks. He don't make no trash. And I live to honor Him. And I fall short some days. But I know I can get on my knees and talk to Him. No other religion would have me. Christ is the only one that accepted me as I was. What a gift. I, I'd like to leave you with this. Uh, I was sitting watching Promise Keepers one day with a notebook next to me. And again, this is how God works. I, I, I believe this. And... Uh, uh, Promise Keepers, and a little poem. A little poem I wrote while I was sitting there, and I haven't written one since. So i got to figure it was God. It wasn't me. And uh, who I was is not who I am. Today I choose to walk a different path. So feel free to throw at me the stones of my past. I will not deny them, but I will gladly receive them and use them to humble me. For today my shield is the Lord. It is because of who He was and the blood that He shed. I no longer have to run from my past, but I can embrace it and walk with peace to my future. I thank you for letting me share all that, folks, and I apologize for running long. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much.